This is Malcolm341. In today's video, we're going to look at a free update to the Mirror and Instance Toolbox. I've added a bunch of new features that people have been asking for, so let's check it out. To launch the tool, if you own the full Mega Script Pack, you come up here and click the Mirror button. If you're not familiar with this tool, you can click in the top right-hand corner of your screen right now, and that will take you to the previous video where I explain all the basic functions. This video is an update video, so it's just going to cover the new features. Okay, so the first thing that you might notice is I have split the help button into click here for help and reset. And the reason for doing that is because this toolbox, particularly all of the settings that you can set here will actually be remembered now. And if you need to get back to the default state of the toolbox, you can click the reset button. So for example, if I set some of these tick boxes the way that I like them, whatever, set some stuff like that, I can now close the toolbox. And if I relaunch it, it actually remembers those settings. And what's really nice is it will actually remember these settings even if you close Maya and restart Maya. So you can configure the tool exactly how you want to work with it and it will remember those settings. But if you forget what was going on or you set something or the tool's not working the way that you want, you can come up here and you can click reset, boom, and it just sets everything back to default. I also updated the help file to be easier to read and just more clear to look at. So if you go into help, it's got all this kind of categorization now. So you can see, you know, there's the mirroring, there's the flip. That's what each button does in the toolbox. And then the description is like the uh, smaller font or whatever. And this will have all of the new features that I'm talking about in this video now. I've updated it. And it'll also have the YouTube video links down here, including this video that you're watching right now. Okay, so the next new thing that I've changed is these two buttons here are new and they replace the old Maya mirror options. I didn't find it that useful. Like I was never using that button. So I converted this into two buttons that people might actually use. If you want to get to the Maya default mirror options, you can always just go into mesh and then come down here to mirror and click that. That's all that button did was just launch this interface. But the tool has come so far. I don't even feel like you need anything out of this mirror options box at all to do any of your work in Maya at this point. So we've got the dupe hist button here, which stands for dupe history and duplicate history. And then we've got the instance button. I'll just go up to here and create a polygon cylinder, click cylinder, and I'm just gonna scale that up so we can see it. So when you create a, a primitive of any kind in Maya, you can come over here and click this little node and adjust the segments and stuff, or you can press T on the keyboard and bring up this window and you can adjust the number of segments, height, cap, whatever. You can modify the primitive as you go. But what's annoying is if you duplicate that primitive by going to edit, duplicate, just move that over here, you'll see that little node disappears and then we can't adjust the segments. And then over here, we can adjust the segments, but on this one, it's kind of lost. I'm just gonna delete this one. So what this button does here is it'll duplicate the primitive and keep the history on the new primitive. So I'm gonna hit the dupe hist button. Move this one over here, and then I'm going to press T on the keyboard again, or you can do it by clicking on that thing there. Press T, and you can see I can still adjust the segments, caps, whatever. I can adjust all this stuff, whatever I want, and I can still adjust the segments and stuff on this one. So this button's just like a nice way to duplicate a primitive. If the primitive has no history, this button won't add history to it. Your primitive has to have this node in order for it to work on the second one, but just a convenient way, something I found that a lot of people wanted to do while they were modeling. Okay, and the next new button, the instance button, all that does is it just creates an instance of your currently selected object. I find that a lot of the time uh, when I'm doing this modeling or whatever, using this tool, and I want to create an instance, you would turn on the instance tick box, and then all of these mirror options would mirror with instance. So if I, you know, mirror along X, I select some verts there, it's an instance or whatever. But I also found that I wanted to quite often just instance this and like move it down there, but then I would have to instance it, flip it, and then like flip it back. And it was just a lot of work. So I added a button where you can just select the object. This doesn't need to be on. Click instance. And it's just, it just instances your current object. So see there, I made an instance, but I didn't need to mirror the instance at the same time. So just another convenient thing. Okay, and then the most requested feature for this tool was actually people would like the merge feature or they like the merge feature, but they wanted the merge feature to be able to have like a merge tolerance based on distance. So what turning this tick box on does is after it does the mirror, 
it will try to merge verts. And I had it hard coded to 0 0.001. And a couple of people emailed me and they wanted to change that to a much smaller number because they're working in a much smaller scale. And what they found was little bevels and other little parts of their model were actually getting welded together and they wouldn't notice until later on. And then their model would be wrecked. So the cool thing is because these tick boxes are all remembered now and they don't reset until you reset the tool, they're even remembered when you close Maya and reopen Maya, so is this merge tolerance value. So you can set this to be whatever you want and just leave it. And if you don't reset the tool, the next time you restart Maya, it's still going to have that tolerance in there. So for example, I've moved the pivot a little bit away from that vert. And so I know when I do a mirror along X, it's going to mirror and there's going to be a gap left there. I have the find geometry border turned on and the merge turned on. So it's going to do the mirror, combine the models, try to merge the verts, and then the find GB is going to show me which verts are unwelded. So let's just click it, see what happens. So you can see it did the flip, but because the tolerance was too small, it did not merge these. And then the fine GB highlighted the error of the edges that are unwelded. So you can tell, oh, I need to like go back and fix those later. So this is just for demonstration purposes or whatever, but I'm going to set the merge tolerance to, let's say like 15, so 15 centimeters. And that should be enough to bridge the gap there that was created before. I wouldn't really recommend setting it that high because you might find some other verts like merge all over the place or whatever. But just to show you how the tool works, let's uh, turn on merge, find GB 15, and we'll merge along X. And boom, there you go. See, it welded all the verts together. And because no edges were highlighted after the weld, that means that you don't have any unwelded verts. So I think mostly what people wanted to do, though, is they actually want, I'm just going to reset this, they actually wanted to set this lower. So they actually wanted to move the decimal place. They wanted to go 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And then that would allow them to work in a very small scale and not have things accidentally merge together. So pretty cool. Now you can use the tool exactly how you want, and you don't even need to add that number in every time you start the tool. It will just remember whatever you set here, even if you close Maya, until you reset. And then it'll go back to whatever the defaults were. I'm just going to make sure the tool is reset to default here. Okay, and then I'm going to turn on the merge again. And then the final new feature is the combine merge button. I've made this button context sensitive, and I'll explain what that means. So depending on what you have selected now, each time you press this button, it will take your selection into account and it will apply a different merge combine depending on what your selection was. So if you have exactly two verts selected, any two verts, and you cl click the combine merge, it always welds those two verts to center. If you have an edge selected, it'll do the same thing. So it doesn't matter how far apart they are. If you have exactly two verts selected and you click this button, it will merge those two verts. If you have more than two verts selected, let's say, I don't know, this, 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 and you click the merge button, it will merge the verts using whatever the tolerance was. My tolerance was really low, so it didn't merge anything. You can also look, every time you click the combine merge, you can see what it did here. See, it merged selected verts radius 0.0001, or 001. So I'm going to select some of these verts again here, and let's raise the tolerance to whatever 20, let's say, and let's click combine merge again and see what happens. And so you can see... Now it merged those verts. And so that can be handy if you've got a couple overlapping verts and you just want to like, oh, let's like weld those together. They, they, they've been split or whatever. You can use a really low tolerance and then just click the um, combine merge button and it'll try to weld those back together. Now, if you have object mode selected and you click combine merge, it's going to try to weld all of the verts on the whole model and clean up. Basically, this is like a cleanup task. So if I've got, let's say, all of these verts here and they have been detached, you can see they've been detached because see all the edges are hard there. So they all land on top of themselves. So I just want to clean up my model and basically do a weld all verts and hopefully fix up all that stuff there. So I'm going to use a really low tolerance. I'm just going to click combine merge. I'm in object mode. I just hid the wireframe. Going to click combine merge and boom you can see it welded all that stuff back together so it's really nice depending on what you have selected the one button kind of does all the different merge commands that you'd ever want and then of course if you have multiple objects selected it will do the combine so they become one object and it will also do the merge 
So based on whatever the tolerance is that you set, it will combine them and then it'll try to merge the verts. So let's go back to our other example here. So I'm gonna leave the instance tick box off. So I'm just gonna do a mirror. So all that did was make a copy of the object and flipped it along the X axis. And if I wanna select those two objects and I use the combined, it's gonna combine and try to merge the verts. So let me do a combine and it's gonna make that one model and it's gonna tell me, oh, those, those verts didn't weld and that's because the tolerance was too low. So I'm just gonna undo that. And we know that I think a tolerance of 15 was good to do that. So let's try that again. And boom, there you go. So you can basically use this button to do every type of combine, merge, weld, vert, cleanup, anything you want, all in a single button. It basically does everything that you would ever need. So you don't have to have like a million other different buttons and hotkeys and stuff. I find that really useful when I'm going through and instancing and mirroring stuff. And I'm just like, oh, I can combine is right there. Oh, merge a couple of verts. Oh, do this, do that. The other nice thing too is this will work on instances. So for example, if I was to just make an instance of that, and so these two are instanced, if I select these and I just do a combine, it's going to combine those. So you don't actually need to use the instance, the object beforehand. It will automatically run that if you have an instance selected. So that's pretty cool as well. And then finally, one thing that I forgot to mention was I have unlocked the toolbox uh, height width. So if you grab any one of the corners here, you can now scale the toolbox. It doesn't scale the buttons. That's just not how I've written all the tools. But a lot of people have found that sometimes when I update the tools, for whatever reason, their my Windows prefs gets corrupted. And then the toolbox ends up loading like this on their screen or something. And it was really annoying before because they would have to go and like delete the prefs file. So I've just made it so on this toolbox so far, you can just scale it yourself back down to a regular size. So if you scale it down like that and then just relaunch the tool, it should remember that new size. And I'll go through the other tools at some point and I'll update them so you can do this on all the toolboxes just in case you get that weird error. If you've already purchased the Mega Script Pack, the Modeling Pack, or the Single Script, this will be a free update, so you just need to download the same file again from your original email link to get the new stuff. If you haven't purchased the script yet, you can grab the script by itself in the Modeling Pack, or you can get it in the Mega Script Pack, so take your pick. Thanks very much for watching this video. Without viewers like you, this channel would not exist. If you like this video and enjoy the channel, please support me by purchasing something from the online store. Each purchase goes towards creating more video content and keeps the channel ad-free. See you next time. Have a marvelous day.